there's a fundamental change that occurs in a material that's been stressed above its yield point. We've seen on the stress strain diagram that there's a difference between elastic and plastic deformation. At the yield point, the atoms are not just stretched farther apart from each other, but they're actually pulled or pushed out of their position, and rows of atoms begin to slide past each other. In reality, this can happen even at low stresses, but it doesn't become measurable until it happens to many rows of atoms. The yield point occurs at the level of stress at which the transformation from elastic to plastic deformation becomes measurable. It can be seen on a stress-strain diagram where the relationship between stress and strain stops being a straight line. The yield point shows up in a subtle sort of way. See how gentle this transformation is from elastic to plastic? In order to get good, repeatable results, the offset yield is often used. To find the offset yield, a line that is parallel to the elastic region is drawn from the 0.2% position on the strain axis. This line will intersect the stress-strain diagram at a single point. The height of this point on the stress axis is the offset yield strength. Some metals exhibit strange behavior at their yield point. This mild steel, for example, has an upper and lower yield point. As the specimen is pulled apart, there's a period of time when the part strains or stretches without building up any additional stress. This is called yield point elongation. For materials with upper and lower yield points, the lower yield point is often used for design calculations. So the yield point occurs at the level of stress that permanently deforms the metal. Often, the offset yield is used because it can be found using a reliable, repeatable method. Some materials have an upper and lower yield point, and usually the lower of the two is used for making design decisions. <laughs>